Okay. Welcome back to Manhattan Golf. Uh, I know a lot of you guys want to play college golf, and I'm really excited for you if you're starting that journey. If you're getting recruited, if you're sending emails to coaches, if you have offers, this is all great. Before you commit to a college, though, you need to watch this video because there's a few things that I learned while I was in the recruiting process, and there's a couple things that I've heard from people who were committing to colleges who maybe uh, didn't hear this advice, and I kind of wish they had because I think it's really good advice, and it'll help you too if you're looking to commit to a school. First, do not be afraid to ask for more money. It's shocking. Every school I talk to, if I just said I would like more scholarship money, the scholarship money just appeared. It's crazy. This is a negotiation. This school wants you to come play for them or else they wouldn't have given you an offer in the first place. If you ask for more money, it's not going to scare them off. They want you to play for them. Asking for more money isn't going to make them think that you think too highly of yourself or that you maybe think that you're too much of a hot shot and make them not recruit you. That's ridiculous. Always ask for more money. If they can't give it to you, whatever. Um, it's like if you're in a job interview and you negotiate salary. It's not, it's not an indictment on you as a person. It's just saying that you know you would like more money. So if you want more money, don't be afraid to ask for it. Be honest with the schools you're talking to. Uh, if you have offers from other schools, let your school know. If you don't have offers from other schools, you don't really need to bring that up, but it is something that schools appreciate when you're honest with them about. Um, when I committed to my college, the very next phone call I made was to the other colleges that recruited me to let them know that I was committing to this college. Uh, you don't just want to burn that bridge as soon as you commit to one college. You never know what's going to happen. It's always good to have connections. Um, I never really had any college coaches connections come up later, but I've heard stories of that happening where, you know, um, maybe the one college you went to didn't work out and you want to transfer. You don't want to burn all those bridges because most players don't spend all four years at the same school. And if you decide you want to transfer, don't burn that bridge. Now, this does come with a caveat. Do not lie to coaches about the offers that you're getting from other schools. Most coaches know each other, and even if they don't know each other, there's still a decent chance that they're going to run into each other and talk about you because obviously they both were pursuing you as a college golfer. If they find out that you lied about a scholarship offer that you had from them, that is not a great way to start your relationship with a college coach. So be honest. Um, honesty is always the best policy, especially when you're in negotiations like this with school. Uh, my next piece of advice would be to go where you can play. Uh, I said this in videos in the past, but uh, the only way to get better at tournament golf is by playing tournament golf. You can go to Stanford and get the best practice facilities and the best coaches, but if you go there and for four years you just sit on the bench and never play, it's not going to do you near as much good as if you go to, let's say, a less prestigious school and actually get to compete. That was kind of the biggest difference for me when I decided to go to a school where I knew I was going to compete. I spent two years not worrying about qualifying necessarily, but more worrying about competing in tournaments. And that's something that's going to help you in the real world of competitive golf, especially if you decide you want to turn pro after you graduate. And also, if you're like the eighth or ninth best player on the team, I'm not saying the coach is going to ignore you, but it just doesn't make as much sense for the coach to spend a ton of time with the 8th or ninth best player on the team instead of somebody who's actually going to be competing in tournaments. So go to school where you're going to be able to compete, where you know you'll be able to get into the top five. Um, don't go to some crap school. I mean, go to school where you're going to have to work. But if you go to a school where you know you'll be able to play, it will help you immensely in the long run. Uh, this one doesn't have anything to do with golf, but if the school you're going to doesn't have a, the major that you're interested in, don't go there. This is something that I've seen happen to a couple of my teammates in the past. I had a teammate who was really interested in architecture, decided to go to the school that I went to anyway, even though they didn't have the program that he was hoping for, and he ended up transferring. Even if you think you're going for only golf, it's still very important to think about the major that you're going to be doing, because you're going to spend 10, 12 hours a week working on homework. If you hate those 10, 12 hours a week, school is going to be miserable for you. So pick something you're interested in, make sure the school that you're going to has that, and you'll be a lot happier in the long run. Jared! This is Jared, another pro golfer. My advice to people trying to play college golf is contact schools that even are out of your league. Just shoot out a mass email about 50 schools that you like 
You never know who's gonna reply. You never know who's gonna be interested. You might get something back. That was something I did. I wish I would have done it more as a kid. Uh, I think if I would have gotten that tip, I would have definitely sent out more emails to more schools. That I... We're out of my league, but you, know, you never know. And it's also getting your name out there too. That's a big thing. Exactly. A lot of college coaches talk with me and try to get and your name may pop up. So. Great advice. Thank you, Jared. And that brings up another point. If you're a freshman in high school or even an eighth grader and you want to play college golf, start seeing out emails like literally right now. You never know what's going to happen, but you do want to get your foot in the door. I made that mistake. I didn't start sending out emails until I was a, starting my senior year in high school, which was far too late. All the rosters were filled up. Um, D1 rosters usually fill up their, fill up their um, spots two, three, four years in advance. So the earlier the better. And shoot that out like you up text at 3 in the morning. That, yeah, that's probably bad advice, but you, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, thank you guys for watching. Um, I will see you in the next one. If you guys want some more advice along this line, let me know. And if you have any friends that are going to be committing to college, make sure that they see this video before they make a decision. Deuces. Bye-bye. Jared, say goodbye to everybody. Bye.